The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're going to make a sound-activated toy by looking at how to read a circuit diagram or a schematic and turn it into a functioning circuit. Here's the circuit diagram for our project. I pulled this out of an ebook of 100 transistor projects. On the right, we have our DC power supply that tells us that the circuit runs on three volts. Positive power is connected to a switch, which turns the entire circuit on and off. There are seven resistors marked with R. Each resistor has a unique number, R1 through R7, and each resistor is marked with the resistance needed. Next, there are three transistors marked Q1 through Q3. Remember that T is usually used to label transformers, not transistors. The transistors are also labeled with the part number. Note that Q1 is a PNP transistor, while both Q2 and Q3 are NPNs. You can tell by looking at the emitter and seeing whether the arrow is pointing in or out. Next, there are three capacitors marked C1 through C3. Each shows the capacitance, 10 nanofarads, 100 nanofarads, and 10 microfarads. C1 and C2 are non-polarized capacitors, while C3 should be a polarized capacitor. Notice how there is not a dot where C1 crosses R4. That means they do not connect. There is also a three volt motor and a microphone. The switch is connected to R1 and the emitter of Q1. The other end of R1 will be connected to R2, R4, R5, R7, and C3. When we go to put these in our circuit, Remember how electricity is conducted. As long as all of these leads have connections that all link together, it doesn't matter how they connect. They don't have to be put in this order or configuration. The same goes for everything that connects to the negative pole of the power supply. The motor, the emitters of two of the transistors, and the microphone can connect in any fashion as long as they somehow all connect together. I use the program Fritzing to lay out my circuits. Here I've added all of my components and wires that show the connections. I can use this to move the components around to figure out a layout. But first, let's look at how some of the connections can work. Look at R5, C1, and R6. In the schematic, one lead of the capacitor connects to between R5 and R6. In reality, as long as a connection is made, these leads can be connected in any number of ways. The same goes for any components connected to what is commonly referred to as the ground plane, or anything that connects back to the negative side of the power supply. The motor, the two transistor emitters, the microphone, and the negative lead of the 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor all need to be connected to ground. It doesn't matter in what order because there isn't really an order. If it's connected in any way, then it's all sharing the same electricity. Using fritzing, I got a good idea of where to place my components so that the connections all make sense and don't cross. Let's gather our parts and get to making that circuit. Place the switch and R1, the 470 ohm resistor. So according to our schematic, on this end of this resistor is going to connect four more resistors and the 10 microfarad capacitor. Now to do that, we're gonna create kind of a power plane along the top here. So I'm gonna place all of my resistors so that they're connected there. Next we'll place Q1, which is a BC557 transistor. Now by looking at the schematic, we can see that we need the emitter, which is this pin, to go to the switch. So it can go to any of these four holes over here to be able to fold that over to connect to these. But we also wanna make sure we leave enough room for all of those resistors that we wanna be able to come up and connect to what's gonna be our, what I'm calling the power plane. So uh, let's place this. So we bent our emitter pin over to go with our switch and the collector pin is gonna go down because we'll eventually have a ground plane down here. I'm gonna solder those two pins in place. R2 is going to connect to R1 and also the base of Q1. I'm gonna leave one whole space so I can leave R3 to connect Q1 and Q2. R3 connects the base of Q1, that's the middle pin, to the collector of Q2. Here, this big blob, we have the connections of pin two of Q1, as well as R2 and R3 all connected together. 
and then the other side of R3 and the collector of Q2 right here. I'm not soldering those yet because as you can see, we still need to add C1, that capacitor, to that junction. And then I have soldered and folded down the emitter of Q2 right here. R4 connects to the power plane up here and also pin to the base of Q2. And again, I'm leaving space so that we can connect that third uh, transistor in there. So I'll solder that together. For Q3, we need to have the collector connect to the base, which is pin two of Q2. Uh, also, if you look at the base connection for Q3, there are two resistors that go up from the base all the way up to that power plane. So we need to consider enough room for that. So here's how we're gonna place our transistor. Now I've placed R6, which needs to connect to the base pin two of Q3. Now the other side of that needs to connect to R5, as well as a capacitor that is gonna have to also connect to the collector of Q2. Now, because the emitter pin of Q2 is gonna have to come all the way down to get to what's gonna be our ground plane that's gonna go on along the bottom, uh, I want to make sure that my capacitor and my resistor pins aren't going to interfere with that. So I need to avoid this column. So I'm going to have my capacitor go from here and leave an extra space open here so that it can loop in to this little like triangular connection that we're going to create. So I can add my capacitor. That's C1, the 10 uh, nanofarad capacitor. Now we'll solder these three connections together. We can solder uh, these three here and then solder this to our power plane. C2 has to connect to the base of Q3 and R6 on one end and then R7 and the mic on the other end. Now let's place C2 which connects to Q3 and R6 on one side and R7 and the microphone on the other side. Now let's place R7, which connects to the ground plane, and then uh, capacitor C2, and eventually the microphone. Next, we'll place the last capacitor, C3, and the microphone. The microphone connects to C2 and R7, and then the ground on the other side, and C3 connects to the power plane and the ground plane. When placing our microphone, we wanna line up with the capacitor here and this resistor. So we're gonna go down this column here to the one pin. And then the second pin we want clear for our ground plane here. We're gonna place C3, our capacitor, so that it can connect easily to the power plane and the ground plane. So it's gonna line up with one of the pins of the microphone. Now remember that this capacitor is polarized. So you wanna make sure that the negative lead is the lower one. Woohoo! Our power plane is complete! We've got R1, R2, R4, R5, R7, and C3. Oh yeah! We're gonna add two header pins to connect our motor, and one needs to connect to this pin here on Q1, and the other one to the ground plane, which is running under this white line here. So they're gonna go here and here. The last thing to add is the two pins for my power input. So that needs to connect to the switch on one side and the ground plane on the other. So ideally I would put it here so that it's perfectly in line with the switch here and the ground plane here, but that doesn't really give me a lot of room to get my little fingers in here to plug and unplug my power. So I'm gonna move it down one. So when I go to attach the ground plane, I'm gonna have to jog over one row but we can do that. Okay, now it's time to solder our ground plane together. So we will take the pin from the capacitor here to reach over to the emitter of Q2. We can bend up the pin of our microphone up to the emitter of Q3, and then we'll add a lead to connect this part of the ground plane over here to the motor pin, and then over to the power pin.
All right, let's make this robot dance. Turning on. Hello! Bow! Bow, 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 bow! This reminds me of the dancing toaster in Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters! <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> oh, that's real creepy with a laugh. <laughs> you can make a creepy doll with eyes that flash lights when it laughs. Super creepy. So there are obviously a lot of different uses for this particular circuit, and I would love to hear about your ideas. So post those to the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning.